Sure. Um, once uh, you know, we see the patient sign the consent forms, the patient is brought to the room and then um, she's put to sleep by anesthesia and then they um, positioning, uh, they position her and positioning takes quite a bit of time for a robotic surgery because the patient is at a steep angle um, at at least a 60 to 70 degree angle um, head down. So um, we put special padding to prevent the patient from slipping or having any injuries then we um, use special tape and harnesses to position the patient and once the patient is positioned um, then you know um, we scrub and once we scrub then I put certain instruments in through the vagina to stabilize the, the uterus and for manipulation of the uterus and then we go um, next to the patient on either side the two of us the surgeons we make our incisions, um, we put the camera ports in, then we bring the robot in. The robot is docked onto the um, different trocars that are in the patient, and then um, the camera is in place, and then we get to work doing the surgery. Okay. And then, of course, once the surgery is done, um, everything's in reverse, then um, I scrub again, I, cl I, t I move the robot out of the way, move the trocars out of the way close the incisions, and then we're done. I think it, the reason one would go to Sherman over another place is because um, Sherman was one of the pioneers in the area doing the surgery and have been doing it for a while now. We've done um, you know, over 110, 120 cases using the robot. So the staff is very uh, well used to using it. We always have the same staff uh, for all robo robotic surgeries, whether it's a prostatectomy or a hysterectomy or a myomectomy, whatever surgery you have, you have the same robotic team. So they're very used to the equipment um, and they're very quick at um, turning over the room so the patients don't have to wait too long. Um, the nurses on the floor are very used to handling patients who've had robotic surgery so they know exactly what to do with them. Um, so the whole process becomes easier. The surgeons have been doing it for a while, the nurses in the room and the circulators in the room know what they're doing and the post-op nurses know what they're doing. So the whole team together, uh, you know, is very experienced and, um, you know, when you have a situation like that, I would want to have my surgery there. Um, I kind of explain it to my patients from the beginning exactly as to what I'm doing. I give them a brochure um, on what we do and I also have a website where they can go in and watch these surgeries. Um, the patient initially, um, a lot of them are very excited about it and they're like, oh, we can go home the next day and we can go back to work in a week or two, that's great, as opposed to six to eight weeks. Also, they're very intrigued by the fact that I'm not next to them, next to them, and I'm standing elsewhere and doing the surgery. Um, you know, but they look at it, they they like it, they understand it. I explain the whole process to them, and usually they don't uh, worry about it. I've not had one patient tell me, "Oh, I'm scared that you're not going to be right there doing the surgery." Um, and I also tell them that the assistant surgeon is right there. So I mean, we all in the room. I'm excited about the Twitter surgery. Um, I didn't know much about Twitter until just a you know little while ago, but now I know what it is, and I think it's a good uh, tool for patients to find out exactly what we do, and um, they can go on the site and look up exactly what we do, which will decrease their apprehension, and they'll know a lot more when they come to see us as to what we do. I, I don't know exactly how many are trained to do robotic surgery, but it's definitely a lot less than um, you know uh, the number of surgeons that are out there. We're, in every hospital, there's just a few that are trained to do the robotic surgery. I hope in the future most surgeons will be trained in robotic surgery because I think it's a great benefit for the patient. Um, as far as you know, um, the whole area goes. I mean, maybe Illinois has maybe 15 uh, robots, 20 robots, maybe something like that. The whole world, there's some countries in this world 
um, that don't have any robots. There's some that have two or three robots. So we are very fortunate in the U.S. to have you know a lot of robots around to do the surgery. I, I think so. I think it's a evolving uh, procedure, and I think. In the future, um, a few years from now, a lot uh, more surgery will be done with the robot. The uh, cardiothoracic surgeons are already using it in many places, um, and I hope they will use it in Sherman too. And um, you know, even general surgeons have started using the robot, and um, you know, it'll progress to us too soon. And um, I mean, more and more people will be using the robot because they'll see the benefits. Um, you know, surgeons are very conservative, and um, when you tell them you know, the robot is a good thing. Um, they say, well, I'm not, my hands are not in the patient. I'm not standing next to the patient. So they get worried about it and they don't want to learn it. But uh, the ones who are progressive minded and learn it, see the benefit of it. And then um, it changes their life. I'm really excited about uh, doing this Twitter surgery on April 2nd. It'll be something new. Um, and I'm excited that it's going to be on the web and people can watch it and uh, then have an interactive session, um, you know, and kind of find out about the surgery and things like that. So I'm really excited about it.